some luxury cars depreciate an insane amount, way beyond what you'd expect of any luxury car and even what you'd expect of a normal car. Luxury cars from luxury manufacturers aren't supposed to depreciate as much because they're supposed to be desirable. People want to buy them irrespective of whether they're new or old. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you about five in particular that are renowned for depreciating. Five cars that you should probably never buy brand new if you don't want to have a massive loss of money just on depreciation. All right, no more of my nonsense. Hit like if you want to see more videos like this. Subscribe as well if you're brand new here. But without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> By the way, every car on this list has been looked at from a depreciation period of five years. So if you bought a brand new one in 2018, how much does it cost today? Lexus luxury cars, some of the best on the market when it comes to reliability, thanks to those Toyota engines. They're also not bad on comfort, thanks to meticulous effort put in to give you absolutely everything you need, as well as design, as over time they've become increasingly good looking, at least in my opinion. The problem is, in the UK, Lexus is still often forgotten about when compared to some of its German and British counterparts, which sometimes, but not always, means depreciation can be a bit beyond where you'd like it to be. The new LS500H, which is a great car in my opinion, has suffered a bit from this depreciation. If you bought one new in 2018, adjusted for inflation, you would have lost just over 55% of the value of the car already, losing around 11% per year on average, given you can get them starting anywhere from around £50,000 today. That's actually genuinely not too bad when compared to the other cars on this list, and when compared with the average car depreciation of between 60-70% over the course of 5 years, but actually that's a loss of £62,000 in actual money, which is the second most on this list, hence it's worth including. It comes with a 3.5 litre V6 engine which is merged with two electric motors to make a combined 354 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in a very decent time of 5.3 seconds, not bad at all. Though the depreciation is a shame for anyone who bought these new, the actual cars themselves are magnificent both outside and in, especially if you get yourself an example post-2020 facelift, as they really do have quite an aggressive look and the interiors are clad with some cool extra features like the passenger infotainment screen screens, the reclining rear seats and the lovely materials used throughout, plus it's effectively a Toyota so you can expect good reliability out of it as well. The depreciated luxury car class is dominated by one brand in particular, Maserati, and I can't promise that the Ghibli will be the only Maz on this list, but it does come with a 3 litre turbo diesel V6 that puts out 271 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.1 seconds. But why do they depreciate so hard? Well I'll save the full story for the next Maserati on this list, but the Ghibli specifically suffers from it not being as exotic as the brand name suggests as well as from a terrible set of recalls and failures early in its life. It also competes against executive cars from other manufacturers that are cheaper, better made and cheaper to run as well. It really is a problem that Maserati have faced for a while now and they have such a bad reputation for depreciation that they've actually addressed it publicly but more on that later. For now though, if you bought a Ghibli 5 years ago it would have cost you around £60,000 adjusted for inflation but now they start at around £22,000. That means in total you've lost 63% of the value of the car or around 12.7% per year. To be fair to Maserati, after 5 years, anything between 60-70% to 70 is what you'd expect a car to depreciate by, but the luxury car market is a bit different. For example, you could have bought a Panamera in 2018 for £20,000 more, and it would have only depreciated by 35% instead, which really puts the Maserati depreciation into perspective. And though it does actually look like quite a nice luxury car on both the exterior and interior, the build quality and the quality of the materials is known to be poor, hence there were so many problems in the car's early production years. Also, multiple reviews were unkind about the car, saying it's like a mass-produced car with luxury car pricing, which definitely didn't help its chances early on, and having been in one, I personally quite liked it, but I get where they're coming from. Volvo have massively upped their game in recent years, building some properly cool luxury cars with their quintessentially Scandinavian simplicity. The V90 is one of those cars that in recent years, alongside its Saloon S90 sister car, has really shown what the brand can do with luxury cars, and I genuinely think the V90 is a nice car, particularly in the more aggressive specs. Irrespective of that though, given Volvo typically isn't known in the UK for being the highest tier of luxury or executive cars, depreciation has generally followed the expected levels for a normal car, not a luxury car. In part, that's because this is the cheapest car on the list, starting around £35,000 adjusted for inflation when new, which is really decent value for money. Five years later though, £13,000 will get you into one of these, meaning it's dropped by 67.5% total or 13.5% per year. The benefit of it being cheaper though is that 
that net the amount of money lost for someone who bought one new is the lowest on this list at £27,000. Still a lot of money lost, but not as horrific as some of the other cars on this list. Reviews are incredibly positive about how good this car really is, with its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine makes 194 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.6 seconds. It's known to punch well above its weight in terms of ride quality, and as it's built on the same platform as the massive XC90, the interior remains incredibly spacious, with premium quality materials used throughout. I think also the fact that it's an estate, which is a class slowly in decline, has helped to push prices down even faster, backed up by the fact that the S96 is at around £16,000 today, despite the two cars being very similar in price on release. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. A quick one from me though. If you haven't already, hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. And in the comments, let me know what the most amount of money is you've ever lost on a car that's depreciated. Whether you bought it used or new, what was the biggest amount you lost, or what was the biggest amount you gained? When I was going through a long list of luxury cars, I didn't expect to see Audi up there as having depreciated more than the average, but the Audi A8 seems to have done exactly that. When it was brand new in 2018, you'd get it for just over £80,000 adjusted for inflation, while today you'll get one for around £25,000, meaning that in total it's dropped by £55,000 in the space of just five years. That means it depreciated by 69% overall, or just under 14% per year, which is pretty hefty for a luxury car. Despite this massive depreciation, in a a more depreciated spec it is one of the faster cars on our list with its 3 litre twin turbocharged v6 engine putting out 335 brake horsepower which would get it to 60 in 5.4 seconds thanks to its quattro all-wheel drive so why has it depreciated so much well i think it's also because of the class it's sitting in as a full-size luxury car which is dominated by a leading competitor mercedes the s class is not only the flagship mercedes it's probably the flagship german full-size luxury car so the a8 has never been quite as widely desirable making it harder to sell from new and harder to sell used as well, meaning prices fall a bit faster. It's a shame because the technology in the A8 is amazing and potentially even second to none, but this brings up another problem, as some owners have noted that dealers have been more than willing to drop prices even with amazing specs. So if dealerships are incentivized to drop prices of their most expensive luxury cars, it devalues those cars at the point of sale and depreciation rears its ugly head more noticeably. But if you want to talk about depreciation being ugly, look no further than the Maserati Quattroporte, which, by the way, isn't an ugly car in the slightest, far from it, but the amount it depreciates is absolutely vile. Before I go into context, let's look at exactly how much. A good spec Quattroporte bought in 2018 would cost you around £106,000 adjusted for inflation, but today they start at around £29,000, meaning it's dropped in price by £77,000 in just five years. That means a total depreciation percentage of almost 73% in five years, or 14.5% annually which is not just worse than the average for luxury cars, it's worse than the average for cars full stop. By the way, it's got the same powertrain as the Ghibli, a 3 litre turbo diesel V6 which makes 271 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds. Maserati have literally publicly addressed their depreciation by saying that their cars have developed a poor reputation for high depreciation costs in addition to their more positive reputation for high performance. This reputation isn't completely undeserved. Maserati's vehicles have indeed struggled with high depreciation in the past, in some cases is the recent past, but the tide is beginning to turn. And if you ask me, what that statement says is, we know our cars depreciate a lot, but they're still good, so please buy them, and maybe one day they won't depreciate so much. And I'm not sure that's a very good way to entice people into buying your cars new. I do think the Maserati depreciation problem is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy though, as people looking to buy second-hand examples almost certainly know about the depreciation figures, and therefore want to benefit from a nice cheap luxury car, which the Quattroporte definitely is. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe as well if you're new here. Massive thanks to the patrons there, supporting to you guys as well for watching. But before you go anywhere, click up here where you'll find a video on a bunch of cheap cars that look very expensive or click down here to subscribe to the channel.